everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to read a little bit more out of the Doctrines of Salvation, Volume 2 by Joseph Fielding Smith. There, there are so many things in this. They, there, there's so many things, and I'm going to find them all. So this one has to do with the resurrection, and um, you may have heard this before, maybe not, but it, it turns out, it seems, and I, I've heard this before, I don't know if it was from here or somewhere else, but essentially when you're resurrected, um, you don't have blood like we do now. We have, it's like replaced with spirit. And I know that sounds kind of weird, but we're going to get into it because he has a lot to say about what it's like to be resurrected. And I think it's important that we know these things because, you know, I think I think sometimes in the church we separate resurrection from the second coming when in reality resurrection is a very second coming event even though there's already been people that have been resurrected uh, christ was the first there's been others um really the big event comes at the second coming with the first resurrection and so i have no doubt that it's going to happen within our lifetimes if i, if I had to guess uh, we're going to be interacting with these people we're going to be seeing our ancestors and so why not learn about the nature of resurrection? Now, before we do that, I want to highlight some mission photos from Jonathan Hayes. Okay, so here they are. He says, I was called to the Utah Ogden mission in 2011. On July 4th, 2012, the mission split, and I went to the Idaho Pocatello mission. I started as a Utah State Campus missionary and ended in Idaho Falls. And uh, I like Idaho Falls. I, I wish I would have had the opportunity to go through the temple there, but I, I like that area. I had the opportunity to be a missionary during the hastening of the work. And since returning home, uh, three temples have been announced and or built where I served. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, Pocatello, Idaho. I was an Idaho State University elder there, Smithfield, Utah. The area was split while I was there. In Montpelier, Idaho, I was a zone leader there based out of Soda Springs, Idaho. We saw many miracles, and I had learned a lot about the organization of the church, and I had many opportunities unique to a Utah and Idaho mission, such as attending conference in person with our investigators, uh, serving full-time in a church culture society, and many other things. Uh, most success generally came came to us due to member referrals because we often covered multiple stakes. In the rural, rural areas, less referrals came through, so I asked for tours of every establishment, talked to everyone, learned who all the realtors were, and offered our services to help people move in and out. Door-to-door -door sales was common here, so I often looked for clues such as vivid signs and yards and showed me, which showed me people who answer their front doors, all in combination with prayerful considerations and direction. Okay, so we're going to go through the photos here. He sent uh, several photos. First photo, the day I flew home and I went to in and out saw Travis Barker, uh, drummer for Blink-182 there. <laughs> Late night, come home. Work sucks, I know. She left me roses by the stairs. Surprises, let me know she cares. Just say it ain't so. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I, I grew up with Blink-182. Um, <laughs> All right, second photo. Dumping out a less active members. Uh, and then it cuts off there. Third, mission residents getting ready to shovel snow. Work sucks. <laughs> I know. Um, fourth, companion was sick, so we practices practice teaching a dummy we made, and uh, it looks like the head there is from like a a green pump, maybe a not ripe pumpkin, or I'm not sure what that is. Uh, fifth, we dropped the dummy off in our mission president's office, and he interviewed the dummy. Also, Elder Falabala of the 70 was visiting that day and saw it, so I felt kind of embarrassed for doing that. No, it's, I wouldn't. It's a, it's a missionary thing. I have many photos, but this showcases some of my, some of the more goofy moments of mission life. I've gone out with missionaries since I was a teenager 
And the only thing I ever knew I wanted to do was be a missionary and a father. Currently, I am the ward mission leader for our ward and live in my old mission boundaries. Wow, that that's cool. For me to do that, I'd have to go to Spain. <laughs> and uh, I, I like the U.S. No, nothing against Spain. I love it there. But I have three children, ages five, three, and one and a newly pregnant wife who served a mission in Philadelphia. We live on a acre, half acre with apple trees and are trying our hand at gardening. So your homestead videos are amazing for us. Thank you. Awesome. And, and he goes by Haystack in the comments if you ever see him in the comments. All right, thank you, uh, Jonathan, for sending your photos. It was fun to look at. All right, so let's get into this. Uh, nature of resurrected bodies spiritual bodies in the resurrection. In the resurrection from the dead, the bodies which were laid down, which were laid down natural bodies, shall come forth spiritual bodies. That is to say, in mortality, the life of the body is in the blood. But the body, when raised to immortality, shall be quickened by the spirit and not the blood. Hence, it becomes spiritual but it will be composed of flesh and bones, just as the body of Jesus, of Jesus was, who is the prototype. So that that's an interesting, interesting concept. Now, uh, I must admit, I'm not a big fan of blood. And um, every year with the V, ever since I joined the military, really, it's just been it's been a nightmare when it comes to <laughs> needles and blood. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so i have va health care and you have to go do um a yearly checkup and they do uh labs you know they draw your blood do labs check everything in your blood so now i have um the privilege of every year having my blood drawn uh there was this one time when i when i got to once i was done with basic training in AIT, which is the tech school. I went to my post, which is Fort Hood. I wasn't with my unit yet. Uh, I was with this like transition kind of um, thing. And one morning I went to formation and there were these buses there. And the first sergeant that was in charge of that, of my, it wasn't really a unit, but in charge of me and like the, the people, there's a bunch of us. He was like, no one's going anywhere until uh, those buses are filled. They're doing a blood drive because in the military they don't they don't just take civilian blood. It has to be military blood. Um, I think it has to do with just like all the different vaccines and just different. They they know your blood, so they want military blood. And uh, you know, I started like, oh gosh, you know, I can do it. I've done it before, but just like. It was so awkward. I just like I was just praying, just please let people go, please not me. And thankfully, enough people finally filled the bus, and I, I didn't go. Uh, but I've given plenty of blood, so okay. So I, I I've given blood. It's just not my it's not my favorite thing. Um, okay, so tangible nature of spiritual bodies. This modem blood what? These modem blind teachers of the blind who deny the literal resurrection have a very false understanding of what is meant by a spiritual body. They have based their conclusion on the statement that Paul makes that the body is raised a spiritual body and that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. They cannot conceive in their minds of a body raised from the dead, being composed of flesh and bones, quickened by spirit and not by blood. When Paul spoke of the spiritual body, he had no reference at all to the spirit body. Uh, yeah, so spiritual body versus the spirit body, because we know that we have a spirit body. He's talking about a body that's spiritual. Okay, so when Paul spoke of the spiritual body, he had no reference at all to the spirit body, and there they have made their mistake. They have confused the spiritual body, or in other words, the body quickened by the spirit with the body of the spirit alone. They think that those who believe in the resurrection of the literal body believe that it shall be raised again, quickened by blood, which is not the case. 
After the resurrection from the dead, our bodies will be spiritual bodies, but they will be bodies that are tangible, bodies that have been purified, uh, but will nevertheless be bodies of flesh and bones. They will not be blood bodies. They will no longer be quickened by blood, but quickened by the spirit, which is eternal. And they shall become immortal and shall never die, which that sounds great to me. Get rid of the get rid of the blood. Uh, perfect bodies, no more bad back. I'll, I'll be able to hear out of my right ear again, and I won't have tinnitus in my right ear, and uh, I won't have sleep apnea anymore, and I won't. <laughs> the list goes on and on. <sighs> okay, blood bodies and spiritual bodies compared. Now, if our good friends understood this, they would not fall into the error of thinking that Paul's doctrine was in conflict with that of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ when Paul declared that the body that would be raised would be a spiritual body. You can read in the book of Genesis where the Lord said to Noah after the flood that the blood was the life of the body. The blood is the life thereof, he says. Therefore, quote, whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed, because blood is the life of the mortal body. Um, but with the body brought forth in the resurrection, which is the immortal body, that is not the case. Um, in it, blood does not exist, but the spirit is the life-giving power. Uh, hence, they are no longer bodies quickened by blood, but bodies quickened by spirit. And hence, they are spiritual bodies, but tangible bodies of flesh and bones, just as, just as was the body of the Son of God. Now, this is the doctrine of the Lord and Savior of the world. Resurrection in incorruption. Now, let us understand the meaning of that term, corruption. Perhaps because of the way the, wor the word is usually used, what you may have in mind is not exactly the meaning given by Paul in this passage of Scripture. Corruption here means mortality. It means to be in this world of change. Our bodies are changing daily. They are throwing off the waste, taking on the new. They are so constituted that the, the food we eat, the water we drink, the air we breathe, build up and replace those parts with ha which have decayed or have filled their mission of use usefulness and have been discarded. So this, as Paul put it, a corruptible body that we have now, and this prophet is speaking of the mortal body when he says corruption. This mortal body shall eventually, through the resurrection, become an incorruptible body, not subject to these changes, not subject to disease and decay. Now, I want to stop here because Bruce R. McConkie pointed out that in the early stages of this earth, he, I, I think, he, I don't, I don't know if he was like saying this authoritatively, but he was basically saying that the reason why the patriarchs lived so long is because corruption uh, had not fully taken effect yet on those first generations. Almost as though it was like a process, um, as though there was not as much disease and things going on. And um, you know, we, we know, yeah, just like President Smith is saying, we know that it's part of mortal life. We're, we're here. This is not a permanent body. It's subject to um, everything, to pain, illness, um, all these different things. Well, uh, it, it seems, from what I can tell right now, it, I've always had the theory that sin itself, like sin actually has some kind of effect on our bodies, like in a literal sense. Not not just that we were thrown out of the Garden of Eden, but, um, and, I, and I could be wrong, but um, I'll be interested to see if it does, if it does have some kind of effect on the body. Um, okay, well, uh, okay, let's move on. Uh, kinds of resurrected bodies. In the resurrection, there will be different kinds of bodies. They will not all be alike. The body a man receives will determine his place hereafter. Uh, there will be celestial bodies, terrestrial bodies, and telestial bodies. 
And these bodies will uh, differ as distinctly as do bodies here. For example, white, black, Filipino, Indian, etc. Bodies will be quickened according to the kingdom which they are judged worthy to enter. Uh, now, let me stop here because this is this is interesting, and I don't want to get too like sci-fi or too, <laughs> or too deep, but you see our planet, and we have these different uh, races, ethnicities, and they're they're varied, right? So I I would imagine that through the eternities, um, there's probably so many different types, right? So when we watch sci-fi and you have like these different alien races and stuff like that, uh, I, I doubt that it would ever get to the point where <laughs> some relative of ours out there has like tentacles and antennas. <laughs> But um, it would be interesting to see the wide variety, just how, how wide of a variety is there of us, right, of our species. And sorry, I, maybe this kind of, you know, isn't a conversation for some of you, but you just have to wonder. You have to wonder about our Heavenly Father um, and then just all of our all of our relatives throughout the eternities. I, I think that uh, with distance, time, generations, things can probably get really different and, and really varied. And um, to the point where you go so far through a generation or outward or upward or whatever direction you want to go, and you start seeing some very different people compared to what we look like. Right. And I say that just based on what we have here on Earth. Right. We have the, we all look so different and it's great because you know what? It's diversity. It's a good thing. It gives um, it's interesting. It it uh, makes it so that things are, aren't boring and it gives everybody identity. Right. A, a, a way to distinguish one's self from others by being part of a group, even though all are related in all the same species. Does that make sense? Okay, sorry, I didn't mean to freak anyone out there. Some people don't like to talk about those things. Okay, uh, bodies will be quickened according to the kingdom which they are judged worthy to enter. Elder Orson Pratt, many years ago in writing of the resurrection and the kind of bodies which would be raised in these kingdoms said, quote, in every species of animals and plants, there are many resemblances in the general outlines and many specific differences characterizing the individuals of each species. So in the resurrection, uh, there will be several classes of resurrected bodies, some celestial, some terrestrial, some telestial, and some sons of perdition. Each of these classes will differ from the others by prominent and marked distinctions. Now, that that will be interesting to see how that goes. Uh, I think we'll just have to wait and see. Yet, in each, considered by itself, there will be found many resemblances as well as distinctions. There will be some physical peculiarity by which each individual in every class can be identified. So, and I think that's what it, what it all comes down to, just kind of like what I was saying before. Um, a body is a type of identification, isn't it? When you think about DNA, when you think about facial, or even just body structure, when you think about fingerprints, footprints, um, there's really, really a lot that makes you unique from everybody else. Uh, I guess if, if I go back to re-examine what we were talking about before about the how wide of a variety of um, can humanity look like uh, the spectrum I I would have to wonder if like uh, our Heavenly Father's generation if it was compared to another um, or you know uh, us once we reach that point those that become celestial exalted uh, start doing the same thing Will they in turn pass on basically 
um, characteristics, features that where you could be like, you could look at uh, one family and be like, oh yeah, that's definitely uh, his kids or her kids. And yeah, look, they have, you know, this, which is, which is kind of hard because like looking at all we have is to look, all that we have to look at is us here on planet earth. This is all we have. And from what I can tell, people look so different, but is there something that we're not aware of to where someone from the outside would look at us and be like, oh yeah, that's, those are his children. You can tell because da, 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 da. You know what I mean? So just, just curious thoughts. That's all. Uh, please, no, no angry typing about this. It, it's not that important. Uh, if anything, it's, it's a beautiful uh, thing to contemplate and think about. It would probably blow our minds if we just saw all of eternity. But um, what I plan to do, uh, along with all the other series and things that I'm doing, I'm still going to go through all the teachings of the presidents of the church, see what they say about the second coming, millennium. Uh, I'm going to keep looking into the ten tri the lost ten tribes. But I also, just because there's so much in this book, Doctrines of Salvation, I want to see what else there is. And I, there's more that where where he's talking about resurrection. There's some more stuff that I think I'd like to go over. But that's going to be it for this one. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Oh, and in case you're wondering if you have this book, this is on page, it starts on page 284. Okay, page 284. All right, so if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it. Leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share it in case there's somebody out there that uh, forgot where this came from or wanted this reference. Here it is, and I'll talk to you guys later.